Welcome to worship at Avon Lake Presbyterian Church. This is the last Sunday in our series, The Passionate Jesus, where we've been looking at how Jesus experiences his full range of emotions, and we are invited to also. After the service, from 12 to 2 today, we're invited to come here and to drop off canned or boxed up soups for our mission committee, and then they will get them out to people who are in need. On Wednesday, Lent begins. Can you believe that? Lent begins. We'll have a wonderful service on Zoom at 7 o'clock. We're doing it on Zoom to have more of an intimate experience for all. Invitations will be sent out uh, this afternoon and again on Tuesday. The series is called The Gifts of the Dark Woods. Intriguing, isn't it? Gifts that come to us in times of, of hardship. We have been looking last week at the emotion of grief. We looked at the artwork, Janet Parker. Could you show the picture? Janet created this wonderful cross that exhibited both the, the sadness and the hope associated with grief. Thank you, Jay. We also heard a wonderful interview from Reverend Stephen Blonder Adams. Many people have looked at that interview on YouTube this week. I invite you to do so if you like. Today, we are looking at the emotion of joy. And what will help us today is the artwork Horse of a Different Color by Beth Swartz. Thank you, Jay. We enter into worship. We might feel as though we have to put on a mask that we have to act in a certain way, but we can take down the mask. God does not call us to be any other way than who we are and how we are. We are invited into his presence exactly the way that we are. Please join me in our opening prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for creating us with all of our emotions. Today, We thank you for that most wonderful feeling of joy. We are grateful that living the Christian life takes us on a journey from joy to joy, even as we are in the middle of fear or grief, anger or love. We praise you and then discover joy bubbling up. We give generously with our time, our talents and our money and find joy lavished upon us. We meditate upon the beauty of your world and are taken outside of ourselves into your grandeur. We truly connect with other Christians and joy grows in our hearts. We are grateful for joy. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Let us sing together, Rejoice, our Lord is King. Kingdom cannot fail, he rules over. 
Our Lord Jesus wants us to experience that joy today. But sometimes the things that we've done wrong, they get in the way of experiencing that joy. Let us accept God's grace. Let us pray silently and then together. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the joy that comes to us when we connect others with God. We thank you for that joy that is lavished upon us when we bring your love and hope to others in in pain or misery. And we thank you, Lord, for that joy that comes upon us when we trust in you, when we spend time with you. But God, we're not perfect not one of us. And we, we walk away from you. We turn from those in need. And so our joy diminishes. Help us set our feet again in your wonderful way. Help us again to rush out, to greet those who are lonely, to rush out, to share your love with those who don't feel it. Help us to rush out, connect others with your kingdom of God, and in so doing, again, experience those feelings of joy. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Friends, believe the really good news. And Jesus Christ, and his love, his message, his forgiveness, and Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us pass the peace The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us pass this peace to one another. Hi, friends. Good morning. I'm so happy to be back with you today talking about emotions. This is our last lesson in our series about the things that we feel inside. We've been looking over the last few weeks at Jesus and learning that he feels the same things we do. We're looking at the Bible and looking at Jesus to know what to do with those emotions. I bet you can guess what feeling we're talking about this week. We're talking about joy. And my friend in the picture is showing so much joy. She has a big smile. She looks like she's laughing. She is filled with joy. Joy is a special gift from God. Joy is a wonderful feeling, a feeling so happy inside, and sometimes just a peaceful feeling of knowing that God is with us through everything. We have learned a lot about joy over the last year. Last Christmas, we learned about being joy hunters, looking for joy wherever we go. We also learned at that time that we can still feel joy inside, even when things aren't going so well. Over the summer, we learn that joy is a fruit of the Spirit, a special gift that God gives us. And this Christmas, we learned that joy can stand for Jesus, others, and you, places that we can see God at work bringing us joy. So with all those lessons, what more can we learn about joy? Well, I have a special verse I want to tell you about today. In the Bible, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 22, it says, A joyful heart is good medicine. I love that verse, but do you know what it means? It doesn't mean that we should find a heart and eat it or drink it like medicine. But what does medicine do? Medicine makes us feel better when we're sick. And a joyful heart, the things that bring us joy, they can help us feel better when we're feeling sad or fearful or angry. Like good medicine, they help us feel good on the inside. So some ways that we can find joy to work like a good medicine for our heart is to pray and ask God for joy. We can remember that Jesus was filled with joy, and we can try for that too. We can help others. We can appreciate all the good things we have in life. 
But I often say that the joy experts are kids. Kids, you are so good at showing joy. You shine it through your faces. You light up through so many things. So I asked your grown-ups, could you please tell me some things that bring your kids joy? Can they teach us about joy? And here's what I learned. Kids, you feel joy when you get to be outside playing. Maybe it's a warm day and you get to go to the playground. Maybe you're on the lake on a jet ski. You feel joy when you're playing in the snow. Maybe you're sledding in the snow. Maybe you're making a snow angel or just playing outside having a good time. You feel joy when you get to enjoy a delicious treat like a caramel apple in the fall or an ice cream cone after a long bike ride in the summer. You feel joy when you get to be with the people you love, when you're with your family at the beach, or when you're having fun with your family ice skating together. You feel joy with your pets, even if that pet happens to be a rat. Kids, you show so much joy and shine it in the world. You are like good medicine for us grown-ups. But it's good to remember that God has a plan to bring us joy. The good things we have to eat, the things we have to share, the people we love, and the beautiful creation he has for us are places we can find joy. And that joy can be like a good medicine for our hearts. Let's thank God for his gift of joy in our lives. Dear God, thank you for the joy that you fill us with. And thank you for the amazing kids who show us every day how to be joyful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye, friends. I hope you have a great week. And always remember, God made you, God loves you, and God is always with you. See you next week. Bye-bye. Choir, your singing just fills me with joy every week. I'm so thankful for all that you do so that we can experience that joy of music sung to God.
Let us take our, our prayers up to God, our thanksgivings, our requests. Dear God, we thank you for the birthdays we celebrate in our church this week. We thank you for John Whedon's today, for Karen Cadiz's, for Dave Bruner's, for Mary Lou LaGrasse's, for Dan Shramos. We thank you for all these birthdays this week. Let each of the people have a wonderful day in which they, they know your love for them and they know the love that others have for them and they celebrate in their hearts just how wonderful and special they are. Amen. Let's give praise to God for healings. God, we give you praise that, that you worked through Barb Hall this week as she fell and broke ribs, as she got good medical care and is back home and doing well. We thank you, God, for how Jeannie Waddell is recovering after knee replacement surgery two weeks ago and is doing well. And we thank you, God, that you brought to Jay Canise a procedure last week, surgical, that, that is helping him. And we just pray that that continue to bring him help uh, in strength and durability. We thank you for all the ways that you, you are helping. Oh we, oh, we thank you, God, that uh, uh, for, for uh, Carol's... Um, a brother who is home from the hospital. I mean, Deb, Deb Gantz's brother, after over 60 days in the hospital for COVID, that he's home and, and uh, glad to be home, well enough to be home. Uh, we thank you for that. Uh, dear God, and we lift up um, Mark Pfeiffer as he's recovering after he broke his leg. And we lift up his and Marcy's mom, at, as she, uh, Billy, as she is in hospice and each day drawing closer to our Lord. Just be with them in, in, in the whole process. And Lord, we lift up Dave and Karen Bruner's niece, Kirsten, who is battling cancer. Uh, just ask for your healing light and power to be with her. In your name we pray, amen. Let us continue our prayers to God. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, my goodness, we're glad to have you in our lives. When we think about the, the blessings that you give us, they just push away all the storm clouds. They push away all the, the weight of, of heaviness and difficult things. When we reflect on your providence for us, we are just in awe and touched by your joy. We thank you, God, for the way your presence comes to us when we pray and how that presence goes about with us in all of our doings. We thank you, God, for the joy we find in one another's company, whether on the phone or online or in our family pod together. We just thank you, Lord, for how wonderful people are. Open our eyes to the beauty and creativity and wonderment of each person, absorbing them as a special individual. We thank you, God, for the blessing and the gift of taking your grace and love out to others. Lord, there is nothing more wonderful than serving others, being a conduit of your love, that their sorrow turns to joy, that their confusion turns to clarity, that their helplessness turns to power. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the goodness that comes when we follow you and pour out your love to others. And we turn to you, Christ, for the strength, for the joy, the hope in our lives. And we turn to your teachings. And so we pray as you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to thank all those who are supporting the church with your, your monies that you give. It's greatly appreciated.
Dear Lord God, we thank you for the gifts the church receives. Use them so that your love is known. Use them so that your spirit is entwined with ours and those in the world, that the light of your love shines forth bright from this church, from each of our hearts and lives. Amen. Joy in the spirit, we will go out with God. We will go out with joy in the spirit, we will go out with God. Hallelujah. We will go out with joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now anyone who's born in the spirit. Sing a new song of joy. Now in the fun of the Lord of the Spirit, sing a new song of joy. Alleluia. We will go out with joy. Alleluia. Alleluia. We will go out with joy in the Spirit. We will go out with God. Joy in the spirit, we will go out with God. We will go out with joy in the spirit, we will go out with God. Alleluia. We will go out with joy. Alleluia. Alleluia. Now anyone who's born in the spirit, sing a new song. Of joy. Now, anyone who is born of the Spirit, sing a new song of joy. Alleluia. We will go out with joy. Alleluia. Alleluia. We will go out with joy in the Spirit. We will go out with God. Today's scripture readings are from Matthew and Luke. Matthew 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Luke 10, verses 17 through 21. The 17 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At the same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. In this series, we have been looking at how Jesus worked through and experienced the emotions that all of us humans have. When things provoked him to anger, he saw an injustice done to somebody, he felt anger to get that righted. When he was afraid, when he was going to be turned over to his captors, he felt fear, but responded in trust in God. 
when he felt the loss of a friend, saw Mary and Martha crying, he shared in their pain and wept. When he saw people hungry and hurt, out of love he moved them to act so that they would experience wholeness. And today we look at how Christ Jesus was and is a joyful man. Joy is that most wonderful of gifts that lifts us and raises us. Jesus was such a joyful man. And as we connect with Christ, his joy just flows into our lives. We have artwork to help us with that joy this week. The first picture we have is by Beth Swartz, a horse of a different color. If you look in this fanciful picture, not one out of reality, but one out of the mind of the artist, the, the horses are, are, are gallivanting around and, and in joy and in, and in uh, pleasure. And yet one of the horses, if you could close in on the blue one, the one, this blue horse, the horse of a different color, experiences the joy in a radiant, wonderful way. It reminds me of Christ. It reminds the disciples, it reminds us as we choose to, to live in that joy, how it just transforms us. Thank you, Jay. We have two wonderful art prints from a Amy Rangels. The first print is of the joy that these two mules or donkeys feel together, the love that they have with each other, and the joy of life, the joy of each other's company that joy that we have with those that we love. And finally, we see this joy of this, this beautiful owl as, as the owl is just enjoying this life, just, just full of that, that goodness of life that God gives us. Thank you very much. Jesus was a joyful man. You know, the faith of the Old Testament and the New is a joyful faith. The prayers of Christ, as were the prayers of faithful Hebrews, Jews in Jesus' day, were those of, uh, of joy and, and wonder. To know God is to know joy. Jesus enjoys God. Listen to the, the, the prayers, the hymns, the songs of, of, of the Hebrews. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. To worship, as the Psalms show us, is, a, is an event that's all body one. We're called to, to clap. We're called to sing. We're called to exalt. We're called to shout. We're called to thank and praise. All these different ways of, of enjoying God. And so Jesus does. We know that he goes off early every morning to go off and pray, to, to have that, that, that joy-filling experience of being with God. And that joy expressed in the Old Testament, expressed by David in the Psalms, is based on this knowledge that, that God is in control. That joy comes out of this knowledge that even if the moment is bad, God will make things good. Jesus has this trust in the goodness of God. He knows that God's plan will bring good to all. After all, when he was born, the angels came and said to the shepherds, you remember that from Christmas Eve? Said to the shepherds, good news. Good news is to all of you people. For he was born this night a savior. Good news. Jesus knows that God's plan for all is to know his love, to know his goodness. This gives him joy. I'd like to listen to one of our, our own members talk about joy. Well, today I'm really happy to have Matt Wendling with us. Matt's a super elder in the church, and I've observed him for many years, and I know he's a guy that's a really joyous. Matt, I have a few questions for you. Excellent. Is joy 
a naturally occurring feeling or is it a choice? Well, uh, Charlie, I think it's it's a little bit of both, really. Um, the Holy Spirit um, gives us all um, hope and, and joy inside. Um, but it, it's something that we also have to choose to exercise. So it's a gift that we're all given, but it's a gift that we have to choose to use. Uh, likewise, joy and, and choosing to respond to situations in a cheerful way and a joyful way and not letting things get you down is, is a, is a habit that can be practiced and you can get better at it. So it's something we're all given as a gift, but it's, it's something we have to choose to use as well. Matt, when you're not feeling joy, how do you find it? Look for the positive in situations and look beyond the situation to the, the situation that transcends any given moment. Um, that, that we really are all blessed to be alive, to, um, to have the people in our lives that love us and um, to, be, to be loved and, and to have done and seen the things we have throughout our lives. So um, really, it takes a lot of bad stuff to overcome all of those blessings. So if you keep that in mind, that, that we really are full of blessings, our lives are so full, um, keeping, keeping that in perspective, I'd say. Keep it in perspective. God's bigger picture, Matt tells us. It helps us to feel joy at the moment when difficult things are happening. Knowing that God is just giving all these blessings to us. That is how Jesus lived. Just a wash in the knowledge of the blessings of God. And one of the blessings that Jesus experienced was people. Jesus enjoys people. We see this across the scriptures, all these stories and accounts where he is just loving people. When we discover how wonderful people are, we find joy in their midst. Jesus, he, he, he loves being with, the, the, with children. You know, and, and children, they, they know a real person that they can read a person well. If Jesus was stern and austere, you know, they wouldn't want to be around him. But we see in the Gospels how children want to be with Jesus and how their parents want them to be with Jesus and how he loves to be with them. How do we know that? Because he's criticized for it. The disciples and others, they, they think he should be above children, to see should be more serious and not spending time with them. But Jesus says, no, 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 no. Let those children come to me. And they crawl up on his lap and he embraced them. He loved children. He loves people. We see that he just likes being with them. You know, if, if someone had an occasion where there was a party and they invited him to it, he came. One of his first miracles in, is at the wedding at Cana. He came to the wedding, and do you remember? He didn't come like a, a stern, austere, uh, reprimanding sort of religious leader. No, he came on, loved the people, loved the wedding. The, the wine ran out. What did he do? He made a miracle, turning water into wine, adding to the celebration that was there. Jesus was, he was with the people, loving them, find joy in them. We know that because he's criticized for it several times. Some of the disciples of John, they, 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 they are used to fasting and they are used to how severe and serious John is. And they, 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 they say, you know, Jesus, why don't you and your disciples, why don't they go around fasting? Why don't they live an ascetic life like we do? And Jesus responds and says, well, you know, when I'm here with you all, it's like a wedding. And, and people have fun at a wedding. They, they enjoy life. There'll be plenty of times that'll be hard, and, and we'll get through those. But when I'm here with you, let's, let's rejoice. Jesus was, was even criticized by the Pharisees that there was something wrong with him liking people. The Pharisees had an idea that you should only be with a certain set of people, people that were, oh, of the same class, of the same moral level as they were. And they looked on down at the way Jesus just loved people. 
I mean, if he came into your house, he, he would love to hear what you want, what you like. He, he would want to eat with you. He, he, he would want to hear your stories. They criticize him for it, you know, and, and, and he says, look, I, I came to heal people. I came to help those who need help. I'm not going to stay away from people. I'm going to be with people. At one point, Jesus realizes that others don't approve of him, of the way he finds this joy with ordinary people. There's this, this interesting verse in, in Luke 7 where he, he says, you know, there's a, a line from a, a parable or a song that it sort of illustrates me. He says, we played the flute for you and you did not dance, meaning Jesus would, like a musician who would come town to town preaching the gospel, that would try to bring joy and get people to join in the dance, that they didn't want any part of it. Jesus went on. You, they say about me, the Son of Man has come eating and drinking. And you say, look, a glutton, a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. <laughs> He's saying that you misunderstand me. You misunderstand that as I enjoy being with people, it's the people that I love. People enjoy food, so will they eat good food? People enjoy good drink, so we'll have good drink. But it's all to be with people, to love them. We follow Christ by seeing the, the wonderful things in people, for looking for all those good qualities they have, not, not collecting the bad. You know, as a teacher, he was a storyteller. By the way, didn't you love those teachers in high school that told stories? Weren't they the, the fun ones? Jesus teaches with these wonderful stories. People gather around. They want to hear from him. He makes them feel good, feel better. And he collects stories of joy. He tells one story. He says, there was a woman and she lost a coin. Everyone can relate to that. Losing something valuable. Ha, you should have seen me two weeks ago when I lost my house keys. She lost a coin. And so she's frantic, going around the house, turning it over, trying to find the coin. She finds the coin. Such joy she has. That's how it is in heaven. The angels rejoice when one of you turns from sin and turns to God. Such joy. Jesus told joy a story. Jesus loved being with people. And he loves sharing God with people. He, he loves sharing the, the power of God with others so that their lives are made better, so that joy becomes a greater part of their lives. Let us hear from Matt again on joy. While many people express joy in happy moments, I have noticed that you have that ability when others around you are stressed or fearful to show joy. How do you show joy in those tense moments? Uh, I'd say it goes back to that idea of perspective again. I also, um, I think I'm a little empathetic. I, I, I have empathy for others and, and I, I don't like seeing others in pain. So my default is always to try to cheer people up. Um, and I don't know if that's, again, maybe um, naive of me, but um, I, I, I default to, to trying to bring cheer and trying to spread joy. So I'm, I'm always trying to get a laugh, get a smile, see the bright side of things. So that, so that old bluegrass song, keep on the sunny side of life could be your mantra. The, 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 eight, the eighth point of the scout law is, is a scout is cheerful. And um, I, I, I tell the scouts and I, and I believe myself that for all of these points of the scout law, the most important time that they apply is when it's hardest. So it's, it's easy to be cheerful when, when it's bright and sunny outside, but it's important to be cheerful when there's a hard job to be done or a negative situation going on. And just leading by example to practice that to, to not just say it, but to practice it and do it and help others with it. Um, 
that that's how I choose to lead is, is hopefully by example. So, so Matt, what encouragement can you give to others who have a hard time expressing that joy? Uh, it's a good question. Um, maybe, um, it'll be okay. I, I, I really, uh, g- um, God, God loves you. God is with you. And, and of course God made you. So, um, keep that in mind, keep things in perspective and, and it will be, everything will be okay. Jesus lived in that knowledge that in him, things will be okay. The beatitudes that we've been looking at each week, they're all based in the knowledge that we are happy, that we are joyful. And we are in God. Whether there are times of of pain, there are times of anger, times of fear, times of love, that it will all be okay because we are in God. Jesus came that we might know this joy. It's not just random. He said in the Gospel of John, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and so that your joy may be complete. So as we want more joy in our life, we look to Jesus, what he did, what he said, knowing that what he he commands us to do, invites us to do, is so that we will know that joy and know it complete. We read in Luke how he had sent the disciples, the 70 out, and they were there to cure the sick, to tell about God's coming kingdom to share in his his wonderful work of connecting people with God. And that they went out and they did it. And they came back and they rejoiced because we do rejoice when we connect ourselves to God's work. When we take his love out to others, we do rejoice. We just get filled with that, that joy. And Jesus, he rejoices. He rejoices to God the Father in the Holy Spirit that his followers were finding that joy that comes through serving others, through taking that love of God to others, to focusing on the welfare of others instead of our own. Let us hear from another friend of mine on joy. We have with us today one of my really good friends, uh, Reverend Sandy Seaton Todd, and um, she's one of the most joyful people that I know. And, and yet Sandy has, like all of us, <laughs> bad things that go on, you know, hard things. Uh, sometimes people are not nice to her, cut her off in traffic. Like all of us, she has a, <laughs> hard things happening. And yet, Sandy, you, you always seem to show joy. How do you find joy when really terrible things are happening around you or to you. I am a big believer that joy is a choice and that we have to take responsibility for our own lives and life is short. And I feel like it is an offense to God when we don't enjoy and have gratitude for every moment. I mean, life can be really hard. Now, the, the one exception that I would say to that is when there's physical abuse or torture, things like that. But almost anything else, I would say there are things in every moment to be grateful for. And my favorite is just looking at the magnificence of God in nature. It's hard to not be joyful when you are overwhelmed with uh, the beauty that's all around us and the incredible creative nature of our God. Sandy, when you're with a group of people and you notice that they're they're not feeling joy. You know, maybe they're at that time they're being uh, feeling very fearful, uh, threatened. How do you bring joy into those situations? So I don't think I ever try to bring joy. I do think the reality is that all of us who are Christians, wherever we are, joy comes with us because we are walking with the Lord. The Lord is there and the Lord gives strength and joy. So I don't think I probably in those situations... I say less than I usually would other times. I probably just listen more or have a compassionate presence or just the silence. And I'm internally silently praying the whole time, come Lord Jesus, come, bring peace to this person, love this person, overwhelm them with your goodness, let them see their blessings. So I don't think I do anything to bring people out of joy. 
other than I just bring Christ, I pray really hard, and I try to listen and be compassionate. So if you're feeling miserable, uh, it sounds like you're saying you actively pray to Jesus to take you out of that misery into the joy. Is that accurate? Yes. I am a huge believer in the power of prayer. So I feel like every moment is praying. I feel like in my head, every moment before I pick up a phone, before I, I talk to anyone, anything, my whole day, I'm praying. And I feel like one of the elements of, of joy is if we trust in God, that whatever's happening, God's going to bring good out of it. We ask God to bring good. We want God to bring good. Uh, whatever happens in the future, it's going to be okay. Whether we live, whether we die, whether we get sick, whatever it is, it's going to be okay. God will use us for good if that's our intention. I feel like if that is our prayer every moment, and that's what I do, I just live moment to moment in prayer. How can you not be joyful? And I think when we give our time in service of others, or we give our talents in service of others, we're no longer focused on what has upset us or what's wrong in our lives or the problems and challenges that we face, we're suddenly um, realizing that we're a blessing and then that just fills us with joy. How can you not have joy when you know that you're being a blessing? How can you not have joy when you know you're being a blessing? If you want to hear the full interviews of Matt and Sandy, there's a link with the video and you can enjoy them. How can you not have joy when you know you're a blessing? You see, when we connect ourselves with Christ, we become connected with his joy. Even in times of sadness, we can pray to God and, and praise him. And as we lift up that praise, that joy comes down to us intermixed with our sadness, will be that joy. How can you not feel joy when you're bringing blessings to others, when we reach out and care for others, drawing them into the kingdom of God? We find such joy as we see their turns, their tears turn to laughter. How can you not feel joy when you're carrying out to others the blessings of God. May you feel joy this day and every day as you live out this wonderful Christian life. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance, his face upon you and give you peace. Amen. Oh. Oh.